TNA Wrestling crossed the line again with another action-packed episode of TNA Impact. Now, this is the episode following Under Siege, where every member of the system holds the gold, and the group will have a celebration on Impact to go through their hold, their holding all the gold. Interesting enough, on Impact as well, Bullet Club members AB or Bullet Club ABC. Chris Bay and Ace Austin will tag up against Speedball Mountain in the first ever match where the winners will then go against each other to determine who is next for Mustafa Ali's X Division Championship. In another tag bout as well, we'll look into first class Rich Swan and AJ Francis who battle the FBI's Ray Jazz and Zach Layton who have little Guido in the corner and John Gresham will also be wrestling on the show on Impact to go 2-0 since his new debut. Now, the show started off with the recap of Under Siege, where it does show the system holding the gold and the system defeating the House of Hardy in the main event. That led on to some cheerleaders. The ring announcer uh, introduced the system. They are heading to the ring. Uh, Brian Myers... Uh, took the mic. We interviewed him as well just before Under Siege. And they are the greatest faction in TNA history because of every because of Under Siege, every member held the gold. And Moose also played onto that. So there's been a lot of great teams, but the system is the greatest. And then Eddie Edwards added to that by saying that he was already was he was going to already walk out of uh, Under Siege. The champion, it was true, because he wasn't defending the champions. But his ride or die, Alicia, would also win the gold, which she did. And she did thank Eddie and pointed out to a video screen where they were showing highlights with the system's success. But it only played for a few seconds before the music of the broken one. Uh, Matt Hardy played and Hardy made his way to the ring. And... He must render Moose obsolete. Um, and uh, as Alicia interrupted, Matt called her a snow witch and implied that Rebecca Hardy may show up or Rebby Harding, as we know, may show up. And Moose said that there's four of hit them, but there's only one of Matt. Matt responds by winning, swinging the steel chair that he had uh, he brought to ringside with it. Uh, Alicia hit Hardy with the kendo stick, Kendra, as they call it and allowed the system to take control. And they were just about to wrap the chair around Hardy's neck, looking to injure him, like they did Nick Nemeth a few short weeks ago. However, Nick Nemeth's brother, Ryan, made the save, and the system bowed out, or bowed to the air, bowed away from ringside. Nick Nemeth's brother, Ryan, I wasn't sure he was let go by AEW, you know, so I don't know what's going on there, whether they've got a, a paper, you know, episode deal for him or whatever. But Ryan Nemeth in uh, TNA, he's got a, a good ring to it, by the way. Um, now, I did keep saying about dissension in the ranks of um, Bullet Club ABC. Nigeria Miller interviewed them uh, before this and, you know, basically saying that the winners of the tag match would have to go against each other. And Ace Austin then said that he would have won the X Division title had Chris Bay been at ringside. Now, if you remember, even a month or so ago, it was Ace Austin who was complaining to Chris Bay that he was focusing more on the X Division title than they were the tag team titles. And now it seems as if Ace Austin's attention had switched since he smelt X Division gold. So he's more dissension between Bullet Club ABC. Uh, Santino, though, was backstage uh, and he was interrupted by the system who want him to do his job. And Santino said he's going to make a huge announcement later, so stay tuned to that. Um, we now get finally to the first match. It was first class against FBI. Uh, it was a little bit of a squash match, if I'm honest with you. First class won this quite comfortably. It was a huge net breaker, though. A net breaker, a choke slam by AJ Francis. And Rich Swan hit the frog splash uh, on Jazz for the victory. It was a really good showcase match for first class. And again, I kept on last week about saying the word development, character development. AJ Francis is a prime example of that. I saw AJ Francis uh, this week on NWA. He, he went over there for hard times and he took on Brian Idol in a 
low DQ match that was actually really, really good. And again, I keep saying that the more that we see this character, the more it develops, the more he's given time in there to develop as well. You're seeing a really good side of AJ Francis here. Rich Swan obviously is one of the best competitors there. But to see AJ and seeing this continued growth is fantastic to see because he's very talented, not just on the mic, but in the ring. And it's showing now on TNA. So more of that as the first class take control and easily dispatch uh, the FBI uh, on this occasion. Anyway, will we see the FBI again? Uh, who knows? I hope so. It's a great nostalgia with little uh, Guido on the outside of the ring. Um Jake something was backstage um, with Santino, but he was interrupted by the Rascals. And Morella said if they wanted action, then it'll be the Rascals against Jake something and a partner of his choosing. And all of a sudden, Cody Dino just walked up and offered his services uh, to Jake something. Would he take advantage of that? We will wait and see. Uh, Alan Angels uh, on talk was on his talk show this week. He had Steph, Delanda and Con on there. Um, it The interview didn't last very long before it started spiralling out of control and going downhill with uh, Alan Angel was implying that Con and Delanda were dating. Um, and Steph asked Con if they were friends with Angels and he said no. So basically they threw him to the side and walked off. Alan Angel was not making a good impression on Steph Delanda and Con. It's still good to see Steph Delanda in TNA. I know the official word is she hasn't signed a full time contract with TNA on but on a per appearance thing I think at the moment she would be a great acquisition if TNA could get that one over the line on a permanent basis Steph Deland has been one of the best women on the independent scene over these last few years with obviously Matt Cardona who appears uh, in TNA as well every so often and it'd be great to see Steph Delanda uh, in the ring uh, for TNA on a permanent basis. If they could ever get that deal done, it would be great. Uh, more Steph the Lander on TNA Impact, if you please. Thank you. Um, the tag match that we said about the Rascals uh, defeated, uh, de de they did defeat, sorry, Jake Summick and Cody Dina. Um, they did, Cody Dina did ask if they wanted the fans to see a regular tag match or a tornado match. And it turned out to be a tornado match, which means no tags. Cody Dean is, I'm not sure where he's going or what he's doing, but I'm liking this side of Cody Dean. We need to see it uh, more often. As we go into the break, they're already in quite the uh, command, uh, something in Dean. Um, but the Rascals did gain uh, the match in the end. Um, they did use uh, spray paint to blind uh, Jake something. Um, and they did the double stomp on Cody Dina to get the victory. But post-match on this, Macklin come out uh, to took out the Rascals. And as he was going backstage, he bumped into Kazarian. Uh, and they was having an argument about Kazarian was saying the issues between Alexander, uh, Eric Young, Macklin and K Kaz were, were not over. And um, Macklin didn't uh, seem to agree with Kazarian at that point. Hopefully we'll get to see Macklin v Kazarian because that would be a match that I would really want to see in TNA. Maybe they'll get that um, match uh, agreed at some point, maybe a pay-per-view. I think no surrenders coming up soon. That would be a good one. Um, Tom Honeyfan was next. Now, Tom Honeyfan is one of the most underrated announcers, commentators in wrestling. He'd done a great job at WWE, done the WrestleMania thing. It was a huge get for TNA uh, when they got him a couple of years ago now. And he hasn't looked back since. He has been absolutely brilliant uh, since going to TNA Wrestling. And he sat down with new signing Mike Santana. And he's basically going to call in TNA home. Um, you know, and he was a member of LAX. And that was his first experience on television. He said he'd lost his father during the time of his time away. We know he was in AEW. Um, he'd lost his father. Um and a pandemic happens. A lot of issues came to basically the surface at this point. And Honey Fan made an interesting one saying that Santana made the choice to go sober. Uh, and, that, and that basically, Santana said that they had to do that to save his life. And there's going to be another part to this that I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing. Um, it's going to be really interesting to hear more of the story from Mike Santana and where they're looking to go with him on TNA again another great talent looking forward to seeing him actually in a couple of weeks at Progress Wrestling Super Strong Style event um, Santana will be there I can't I think mean, he might have Luke Jacobs I can't remember who he's got uh, 
or in our oh, Colin Mills. Colin Mills is who Santana takes. A good friend of ours to the show. Colin Mills will take on uh, Mike Santana there. So I'll be looking forward to seeing him there. But I'm very much looking forward to seeing what TNA do the character wise. Where is he going to go? It's really the first time because as his uh, tenure in AEW is coming to an end, he just split up with Ortiz. There was a lot of real life beef there, apparently. Um, and we never really got to see they had their match. That was it. And then they're gone. So now we'll get to see a bit more Mike Santana on his own and see what he's all about. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he can do, especially at TNA. Uh, Gabby Lespacer was the host of Gabby AF, uh, was at the ring, and she had scored an interview with Ash by Elegance. But before she could introduce her, she was interrupted by the personal concierge who made Ash's introduction. And this all boiled down to, once again, um, Zaya Brookside and Ash. Now, uh, Ash by Elegance's jewellery was apparently stolen. And um, Zaya Brookside has basically said, I would like a rematch with you, Ash. And for your stolen jewellery will be on the line next week. Um, that'll be interesting to see if Ash by Elegance uh, can take uh, the jewellery back that was stolen from her. Will Zaya Brookside? I think they're one each in matches now. So it's going to be the rubber match, so to speak, between Zaya Brookside and Ash by Elegance. Uh, Zaya Brookside, very, very highly rated over here in the UK, being brilliant. Ash by Elegance. Again, I go back to say, uh, AJ Francis, and I say this constantly, the development of her character, giving her time, giving her a chance to show what she can do on mainstream TV has really catapulted her up that ladder. For people that didn't really care about her, she's now getting exactly what she should be getting, which is eyes on her. And the booze that she's getting is great because it means that she's doing her job very, very well indeed. Now, they did play uh, a... a Video package did play detailing the rise of Joe Hendry. No, not Joe Hendry's in the rise up the ranks, but the rise up the charts in the UK. I think he finished fourth over here in the UK in the official charts. They had to play his music on the radios. It was absolutely hilarious. But well done and congratulations to Joe Hendry. Uh, I'm saying his name. He hasn't appeared, unfortunately, on this show. Maybe he'll be on a show with the hit in the turnbuckle at a later date. Hopefully we can get him on at some stage. It would be great to uh, speak with Joe after all this success and see how he feels about the rising above the chance. And Eurovision Song Contest uh, nominee as well. <laughs> Maybe I, I would like, you know what? If there was a song that fits the Eurovision Song Contest, for those of you that don't know what the Eurovision Song Contest is, uh, every year there is a, a, a music uh, competition where... Uh, uh, acts from around Europe, I think even Australia have been added to it at some point. Uh, perform a song. They get they choose a band. They choose somebody uh, to perform a song for them, uh, and the rest of the the European vote uh, goes in, and obviously they pick the winner. Uh, Scotland should have picked Joe Hendry. I and if there was a song fitting for Eurovision, it is Joe Hendry. I would have. I would love to have seen him do that. Um, it would have been a great, great uh, uh, Eurovision. I, I might have even watched it if Joe Hendry was doing it uh, for Scotland. But nevertheless, he's not. So I don't care. Um, Santino Morella. Now, you remember earlier on in the night, he said that he had a huge announcement for next week's impact. And by God, he had. I need to look at this now. A champion's challenge next week. The champions of Moose, Eddie Edwards, Brian Myers, Alicia Edwards, Masha Slamovich, Jordan Grace and Mustafa, Mustafa Ali and Laredo Kid will take on the all-stars of Matt Hardy, Steph Delander, Sammy Callahan, Eric Young, Ryan Nemeth, Luna and Fred Spitfire and Joe Hendry. <sighs> Faces, heels, all on the same team. What is going on with that? That is going to be an interesting match next week on Impact. I'm looking forward to, certainly to watching that. But also what I'm looking forward to was the next match, which was Will Ferrara against Jonathan Gresham. No surprise there. Jonathan Gresham wins with the claw. Once again, a continued uh, character development for John Gresham. I really enjoyed and I've really enjoyed from the this. I mean, I've enjoyed John Gresham's work for years in TNA anyway. Uh, and he's he's one of the best wrestlers, in my view, possibly in, in, in the world. Uh, what he does, he's technically gifted uh, wrestler as well. And this new character with the mask, 
he certainly added elements to to his character enhancement and TNA have done such a great job from those initial uh, meetings that he's you know his meetings that he had on these skits all the way to the character re-debuting under siege uh done a really really good job of this i mean he made short work of uh, will ferrara and again some real good uh development continued character development for him uh there i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing who's he going to target though where's the first target for john gresham we'll have to wait and see uh, maybe we'll find out more next week on impact but nevertheless mustafa ali now comes out to join the announced team for the main event which is speedball mountain Tre trent seven and mike bailey versus Bullet Club ABC, Ace Austin and Chris Bay, the winners of this match would have to face each other for the right to take on Mustafa Ali in the X Division title. This was a fantastic TV main event. I tell you what, it was, you know, it's no surprise, as I say before, when you've got Bullet Club ABC, you've got Trent and Speedball Mike Bailey and you put these together, they create absolute magic uh, in the ring. Uh, it was a burning hammer and the ultimate weapon from Bailey that secured the win. Uh, but this, you know, again, when we look at TV main events, this was brilliant. And, you know, this was a real strong addition of impact from pillar to post, really, from start to finish. And it shows the promise for future shows and storylines. There was character enhancement, storyline development, continuing teases with Bullet Club ABC in, in this as well. There was so much. I mean, there was actually a Frosby flop from Ace Austin actually just quickly on this. Uh, well, could have gone horribly wrong, but thankfully it didn't. But it just shows the amazing work that these guys do. Uh, four guys that just left it all in the ring for the main event. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But hey, TNA just keep on getting better and better and better. When will they number one contender? Well, when will they uh, compete for the number one contender? I think it may be next week, could be the week after. But the winners of it, Trent Seven, Mike Bailey, the winners of that will get a shot at uh, Mustafa Ali in the very, very future. But this has been another great review of TNA Impact. Really enjoying what they do so far over there. You can catch it on AXS UK in the States, The Zone in the UK, the TNA Plus application. We'll be back next week with another TNA Impact Review Show. And until then, everybody, buckle down, stay safe, good night.